It's that time of the year once again where our Zimbabwean farmers plan and plot on how to maximize on their yields. We are talking of achieving bumper harvests. This is the time of the year where our farmers are allowed to make corrections because with every passing season and with every coming of a new cropping season, we are talking of extraction of nutrients and minerals from the soil, those that support cropping systems here in Zimbabwe. And the journey to bumper harvest begin with understanding the health of your soil. Now in this particular episode, we are going to be looking at soil sampling techniques and soil conditioning. Thank you Zimbabwe for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agriculture new directions agribusiness and i am wazanai manure so this is a platform which is specifically created for our farming community here in zimbabwe as you can see today we are in headlands we are going to be looking at soil sampling and soil conditioning like i've alluded to earlier and to discuss this and more we have once again taken the liberty of inviting miss wendy matashu mazura the chief agronomist at sitco right here in zimbabwe wendy thank you for joining us today Thank you so much, Wadza, for having me. It's always a pleasure. And where are we and what are we looking at today? Today we are at ZZC, ZZC Moresta Farm in Headlands, where we are going to be talking about the importance of soil testing and soil conditioning because we want farmers to have a good backbone in their farming operations. Thank you so much. What does soil testing enhance when we talk, when we talk about our cropping systems in Zimbabwe? What is the benefit that comes with soil testing and how does it uh, in increase when we talk about yields and even bumper harvest in our community. What is the essence of soil testing? You know what, that the important thing that farmers should take note of is the fact that for anything to be successful, they need to plan adequately and they need to come in timelessly with the correct operations. So soil testing, it speaks to the issues to do with understanding the foundation that is going to be laid for your crop to grow optimally to give you the desired results. So when you talk about soil testing, there are two main branches of soil testing that a farmer can do. The farmer can analyze for the pH level, which we call the potential hydrogen. This is going to speak to issues to do with the acidity or alkalinity of the soil, depending on the scale that is going to be used. And the scale that is normally used is the calcium chloride scale. Outside of that, farmers can also analyze the soil to get a deeper understanding of the nutrient constitution of their soil. Here we are speaking about the nutrients such as your nitrogen, phosphorus and your potassium macro elements as well as the trace elements that are important for crop production then outside of that a farmer can also further analyze to find out the soil organic matter because the soil organic matter of the of the soil that they're going to be establishing their crop is going to have a relationship with the fertilizer use efficiency so all this boils down to an understanding of what crop we are going to grow what the crop desires and how we are going to optimize on the crop that you're going to be growing thank you so much wendy you spoke spoke of the essence, the importance uh, of soil sampling and soil analysis. Now as we move right along Wendy, I want us to talk about the periods that this exercise should be done. I understand that our viewers there at home are taking notes each time I have you on the program. It's always a pleasure. They learn a lot. They pick a thing or two. Let us talk about the periods, the time frame or, or the period of the year when this should be done, when it is critical. Timeliness, timeliness. The issue to do with timeliness is important Wadza, because we want our farmers to understand that if you fail to do it on time, you might not be able to come in with the remedial measures on time to benefit the next crop. So we want farmers to also analyze their soils during this time of the year, soon after harvesting, which is why uh, yesterday there was talk about winter plowing and still now we talk about winter plowing. Because winter plowing, it speaks to issues to do with then analyzing your soil, coming in with the correct conditioning methods and con conditioning fertilizers that are going to work in advance of the onset of the next season. Especially when we talk about lime. You know with lime water, it desires to be applied and to, to take uh, effect within about three to about five months. Okay. So if a farmer is going to come in when the season is started, the, when the effective rains have been received, then that's when the farmer wants to come in with their lime. That lime is not going to benefit that particular crop that is going to be grown that season. Okay. It's going to start conditioning the soil slowly and then start working later such that the farmer will not benefit which is why we say if you analyze on time you are able to come in with your lime with your um, soil conditioning elements so that th that conditioner is going to work in time for the next cropping season how is it done this process I understand that our viewers there home are watching 
How is it done? Does it need an expert to come or drive from Harare to come and do their soil sampling? Or a farmer individually can do it? How is it done? The how part is very important. Because you know farmers sometimes they will take a wrong sample. And a wrong sample will not give you a correct diagnosis. It will give you bias. So you need to make sure that you are doing it correctly. When you are analyzing your soil, depending on the scale of production that you are in, you need to understand the following principles. First and foremost, you need to make sure that the sample that you are taking is representative of the area that you want to analyze and to take note of yes. and you also secondly you also need to make sure that there is no bias within that sample that you are taking say for example there is an entail in that sampling uh, plot that you are going to be taking a sample from then you need to avoid sampling for that from that entail because it's going to give you biased results okay. and entail is known to be nutritious yes. so it's going to give an impression that the whole area is good in terms of the nutrient constitution when in actual fact is a localized area that is that result so you need to avoid that entail then the next thing you also need to avoid sampling on the top soil okay. because the top soil is it has a lot of humus it has a lot of uh, organic matter that's on top of the soil so you need to make sure that the sample is at the correct depth the correct sampling depth should be from around 20 to 30 centimeters okay. which is the root zone in the soil profile where your roots are going to be playing taking their nutrients taking their water and growing optimally so you need to sample in that root zone then when you are taking the soil samples say for example the soil that we are seeing here this land that we are seeing here yes. the soil is uh, relatively similar in terms of the color the outlook that we are seeing in this particular field True. so based on that when you're taking this particular uh, area you are going to take this sample and maybe you're going to block it up depending Depending on the size of the land, maybe you get um, uh, 10 hectare blocks, 20 hectare blocks, depending on the size of the land. Okay. But the variations should be based on the differences in the outlook, uh, the visual uh, aspect that you are seeing. Where you have red soils, you are going to differentiate red soils, black soils, uh, sandy soils, clay soils, loamy soils, so that you have variations. Okay. Otherwise, if you mix all of them, imagine the sample is not going to be representative area that you want to get thank you so much wendy there you had it viewers when it comes to soil sampling and soil conditioning it's not a one size fits all there you had it we are gonna go on a short commercial break we'll be right back with this and more in the second segment stay tuned Thank you Zimbabwe for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness. We are in the second segment and today we are here in Headlands and I am with the Chief Agronomist of Sidco, Wendy Matashu Mazura. Now viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with me, the producer Wazanae Manure on 0772-807-506. Uh, alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wazanai. You can leave your comments and suggestions on our YouTube channel, Agribusiness with Wazanai. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at Agribusiness110. Now, earlier on, before into the break, Wendy, you were telling us that this issue of soil analysis and soil sampling, it's not about a one-size-fits-all. You need to be uh, diligent as a farmer so that you understand whether to put calcitic lime or the dolomitic lime. Moving right along, I know that most of our farmers are taking notes. They they want to know how do you go about it, the process, what does it entail, what does it mean? When a farmer wants to analyze their soils, they need to get in touch with the, their local agritech officer who is going to assist them on the how part to make sure that they understand how they are going to be taking the samples. There are different methods of taking soil samples in the field. You can use the W method where you are walking your field in a W pattern or yes. an X pattern or there is a stepped method where you move and you do a stepped way of taking your samples. Okay. So the, the how part is important to understand how you are going to do it. Then from there, once you have taken your soil sample the important thing and the next thing is to make sure that you take it to the relevant people who are going to get you the best results so there are different options and alternatives for farmers to take their soil samples to first and foremost the ministry of agriculture is a department that deals solely in soil issues soil conditioning soil testing issues and store and uh, and will provide the necessary corrective measures that farmers will need to embark on so they need they can take their samples to soil to the uh, they can take their samples to the Ministry of Agriculture yes. for soil analysis. 
Then there are other options. There are private labs that do soil analysis. Farmers can also engage them and get their soils analyzed at a fee. Yes. Then also we find that fertilizer companies are in the business of doing soil analysis so that they then provide custom-made fertilizer recommendations to farmers. Be they the lime uh, elements that farmers need to apply, the soil conditioners, or the fertilizer regime based on the crop requirement, the NPK ratio, the trace elements. So these fertilizer companies can also provide that assistance. So they are a different, uh, uh, they are a number of options of where farmers can take their samples to for soil analysis. But for more information, they can engage their Ministry of Agriculture, Agri Agricultural Extension Officers for more information on that. Okay, thank you so much, Wendy. I want us to talk about the advantages. I know that we spoke of them earlier. That come because I know it's a process. It's a cumbersome process where you need to maybe sample your 10 hectare plot or your 20 hectare plot so that you get uh, mag you maximize on your yields. Let us talk about the advantages that come with uh, soil sampling, soil analysis, soil conditioning. Unlike your counterpart who might maybe just extracting minerals from the soil year in, year out. What are those advantages? The advantages of conditioning your soil on, on, on time with the right soil conditioner are that you get, number one, fertilizer use efficiency. By fertilizer use efficiency, it might seem like a fancy term, yes. but what we are referring to here is the fact that sometimes if you apply, say for example, 10 bags of basal fertilizer, 50 kgs of a basal fertilizer with a nutrient constitution of 7, 14, 7. If you apply 10 bags, another farmer who is going to apply that same quantity without soil conditioning and having acidic soils. By acidic soils, we are referring to those soils with a pH that is um, less than, uh, less than 6.5. Yes. Less than 5.5 rather. Less than 4 going downwards. That is very acidic soil. So those acidic soils are going to, uh, are not going to be in a position to avail the nutrients from the fertilizer. Out of the 10 bags, maybe 2 bags are going to work, 3 bags are going to work, which is to say you get 20 or 30 percent use of your fertilizer based on the acidity of the soil okay. so if you get your ph level to be raised up to between 5.5 to 6.5 6.8 this is the optimum ph range that our farmers should work with for their soils to optimally use the fertilizer that they apply okay. at that range you can get even 80 percent fertilizer use efficiency okay. so that's the first thing then the next thing that comes with soil analysis and uh, doing the correct uh, remedial measures is, a me is, is, is to do with the uh, soil or uh, soil microbes that exist in the soil they also desire to have conducive environments for them to be able to exist and do their uh, microbial activities without being uh, getting any hindrances from the soil uh, the, the acidity in the soil yes then you also find that the crop itself it's, it might not be able to work to grow well if the soil is acidic then the other thing the fertilizers they also not be able to work optimally if the soil is acidic agrochemicals themselves say for example herbicides yes if you want to apply a herbicide if the soil is very acidic then that herbicide might be affected by as the acidity of the soil especially when we're talking about the pre-emergent herbicides so there are a number of things that come into play with acidity of the soil and it all boils down to reduced productivity and reduced yield levels for any cropping venture so a farmer should be pushed to optimize their yield levels by making sure that they understand then avail the necessary nutrients that a crop requires by making sure that soil conditioning is done on time and with the correct conditioner. Thank you so much, Wendy. As we were talking, I was visualizing the pH meter in my mind. You have taken me back to my varsity days where you would study the pH meter and try to understand the alkaline side and the acidic side. Thank you so much, Wendy. There you had it, viewers. We're going to cross over to our farmer here who's going to be giving us a brief synopsis of their activities and how they achieved to establish such a field with, uh, you know, a uh, good soil uh, looking structure. At this point in time, I am here with Mr. Mike Nyabadza, the farmer at ZZ C Moresta Farm. Say it's a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you. Yes. A brief background of this farm and your farming operations. Thank you very much for being with us to here, here today. We've been on this farm now for about 15 years. Okay. When we came here, there was basically only about 70 hectares and uh, crops. That was arable. What we did is we invested about 3,000 hours of yellow equipment in terms of opening up the fields, leveling them, and making sure that uh, we did trenches for irrigation, and then taking water, uh, power lines to the dam, and setting up pumping stations so that we'd have a farm 
that would weather these storms and the vicissitudes of droughts and other vagaries of nature. So yes, it's taken us um, 15 years to get to what we are today. We have about um, slightly over 315 hectares of land under pivot. Uh, we have um, now we are now going into other crops, but we started off with maize, and we then went into wheat, and now we're doing tobacco. Uh, the first season of tobacco we did 54 hectares of tobacco. We are now up at uh, 130 hectares for this coming season. Uh, maize will be doing 120 hectares of maize, and currently we have got uh, 90 hectares of um, of wheat. Okay, thank you so much, Say. I like that you spoke of investing in irrigation because we cannot rely on rain-fed agriculture if we are going to be taking agriculture as a formidable business. Now, Say understands that you are saying it's been about 15 years since you started these operations. Let us talk about investing in agriculture. This is an investment. It took you about 15 years to be here where you are today. Your words of uh, inspiring our viewers there at home or your word of advice to farmers, upcoming farmers, the youth in agriculture, just your sentiments on agriculture and investing in agriculture? Farming is um, a wonderful business. Uh, first of all, it's real value creation. And uh, I talk about value creation not in terms of just dollars and cents, but the well-being of the people that we work with is so satisfying when you see young children who started with us 15 years ago go through school we send them to colleges where they are now going to be studying for agricultural um, know-how. This, to me, is the real value. Yes, we need to make money because money makes it possible for us to then invest in our people for the future of this country. So we are so excited by being on the land. I always ask my brothers, my sisters, my friends what they are still doing in the cities because the real value of a human being is in the land. Thank you so much, Say It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you. There you had it, viewers, in the words of Mr. Mike Nyabadza, the real value of a human being, of a Zimbabwean, is in the soil, it is in the land. On that note, we are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. We are in the third and final segment where we are talking about soil sampling, soil conditioning, even issues surrounding liming. At this point in time, I am joined by Sam Tawandirwa. He is an Agricultural Extension Officer right here in Rusape. Sam, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure, Wat. Yes. The kind of technical support that you are offering our farmers, I understand that, Murimu Dumeni in this area. What sort of support are you offering farmers in your area? Yeah, thank you, Wazi. Um, as agricultural extension officers for this area, we are trying to help farmers, the commercial farmers, A1, A2 farmers, with technical support on how do they do their crops, when do they do their crops, and to an extent, how they can cater for all the aphids and all the insects that can affect their yield at the end of it. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. I want us to talk about the importance of lime the importance of soil testing, soil analysis, soil conditioning. Let us talk about that. Thank you, Wazi. That's a good question. Uh, as an extension officer, we advise our farmers mostly to collect, to correct their soil pH, but you cannot correct the soil pH from Norway, but we advise these farmers to, correct, to collect their soil samples. You can collect soil samples using many methods, the X method, the W method, where you can go in the field, then you can collect with the W later, different parts of the field, then you mix and collect and correct a one kg of that soil. Then you present your soil to those companies or to those private labs, those who can test the full analysis of your pH. Okay, thank you so much, Sam. Uh, how are farmers taking this exercise? Uh, the farmers that you work with, 
how are they embracing issues surrounding soil testing, soil analysis? How has it been? I understand that you work with farmers. Yeah, yeah. Some of the farmers, they now know the importance of this thing. But some of the farmers, they are still struggling or they have got a lot of a confusion there. They thought if they collect, they will correct the soil samples this year, there's no need to correct for another year. Yes. And also they have the tendency of being led to correct the soils for soil samplings. So there is a struggling on that understanding when and how. But that's the way we are trying to cover is the extension officers to cover that cape so that one day we'll celebrate with farmers when we have a bumper harvest. Thank you so much, Sam. Your final words, your word of advice to our farming community. Uh, my final saying is I advise all the farmers to try this test. Try by all means to correct the soil pH so that you can have a bumper harvest, so that you can have a better yield. You can also have enough knowledge when and which crop to venture into. Thank you so much, Sam. It was a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you, Ad. Thank you, viewers, for staying with us. At this point in time, we're going to witness when Dimatashu Mazura, the chief agronomist of Sitco, doing some soil sampling techniques. Stay tuned. At this point in time, we want to give you the practical illustration of the soil sampling that a farmer can embark on. So here, as you can see, the first and most important thing is to clear the top soil that is on top of the field as well as the stover because this will give us a false representation of the sampling method. After which, we'll then dig a hole that is about 20 to 30 centimeters, which is the root zone from that hole. That's where we are going to collect our soil sample from. It's important for us to note that when we are digging the hole, we should remove the soil that is being dug from the top so that we remain with a clean profile from which we are going to slice up a piece of the soil and put into the container. So we are going to dig the hole here and show you how the slicing of the slice of soil from the profile is going to be done. When digging the hole, it's important to ensure that you remove all the soil from inside the hole so that you remain with a clean profile. Then you slice up a piece of soil from the edges, a slice of soil from the edges of the, of the hole that you have dug. So this is the sampling method that we encourage farmers to do. You are going to do this on the different sampling points depending on the style of sampling that you are going to be using. Some farmers will use the W method, some farmers will use the X, and some farmers will use the stepped method while others may choose to come in with the random sampling method. The important thing is to make sure that you have a representative number of samples based on the variations that are in your field. Once the representative number of samples has been collected in one container, it's important for you to mix the soil so that you collect a sample that is going to go for analysis. So the sample is going to be collected after the mixing process has been done. The final and most important stage in the collection of the soil sample is to make sure that you label it so that you can correctly identify it once the results come back. This is very important for you to take note of. Sampling can be done at different points and at different areas. Remember, soil sampling needs to be done timelessly for you to get the best results. Uh, this afternoon we are on ZZC farm uh, owned by Mr. Mike Nyabaza. Uh, we have sent our soils, uh, our soil for analysis and we got the results. The re results require us to apply a dolomitic lime. Um, we first go in with a chisel plow to a depth of 6, 0 0.6 meters. And as you can see, our chisel plow has got a, a crumbler bar behind which is breaking the clothes so that we achieve fine tooth, which will also aid in the reaction of our lime with the soil. What you can see there is a lime box, our lime spreader there. After we have achieved whatever we are achieving, that is deep tillage and fine tooth, we then come behind with that lime spreader um, with our lime, then we incorporate using the disc harrow. Yeah, you, the, the, the farmers, there is need for us to incorporate the lime so that, um, uh, as you know, lime is not mobile. You need to incorporate it with the, with, with the disc arrow. Uh, then also, our time uh, of application is very important. You need to come in with your lime 
three months prior to planting so that there is ample reaction time of the lime in the soil. Uh, now farmers, I encourage you to put the lime timelessly because if you don't put your lime in time, uh, the nutrients which are locked in the soil won't be available to the plants. There you had it viewers, this episode was centered on soil conditioning, soil analysis and soil sampling. From me was the name Manyore, I'm also on Instagram, it's a W Manyore and the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening, thank you for watching.